today's project is going to be this mantel clock. This is a New Haven Tambor number no. 7. Um, I bought it just because it was available. I was on Shop Goodwill and they'll show you the things that are about to be off of auction first when you type in clocks and um, there was like 30 minutes left on this clock. No one had bid on it and it was $9.99 so I'm like okay I can't pass it up. It's mahogany, it's got the inlay, it's really pretty so I thought I would fix it up and maybe sell it um, but my plan now is it's going to go and be donated to a silent auction that's going to be for the dog rescue group that I'm part of. So it may be on high bid or one of those auction sites coming up soon. Uh, I did a little bit of, there's the inside. Timbre number seven got stamped kind of weird. They punched it like three times, so they finally stamped it down here. Duo strike, it's got two little hammers. Um, I've got to get a pendulum. I'm going to borrow one off of another clock while I'm working on this one. While I wait for the one to come in that I found online. And I did a little bit of research on the timber clocks from New Haven. I'm trying to date this. In, the, in this 1917 catalog for New Haven. They show timbre number 15, timbre number 2. So they were making the number 7. It's not in this catalog, but by 1917, oops, wrong one. Uh, by 1917, they had all of their timbres, number 16, number 17. Uh, I think they made about 20 all together. This is the New Haven Clock Company. And it ran between 1860 and 1960. And um, so I'm estimating this one between 1915 and 1920s. And I'm just going to start with cleaning the case up with some of this Howard Speed and Wax because it's pretty dry. Mahogany is one of those woods that is beautiful when it gets cleaned up. It will just shine. The only thing prettier than mahogany is a burl walnut, in my opinion, when I'm working with woods. So I'm just going to work on this clock. Um, there was originally A dial across this face as you could see the little hinge that held it I mean a, um, a glass so I've got a beveled glass to put back on it I just got to take the little screws off and mount it and I'm gonna have a new face on I took the dial off. There were just some screws holding the dial on. Hands off, dial off. And um, these arms to strike the gongs are very stiff. I've gotten this one loosened up a little bit. Where it'll move. The back one is still very stiff. They wouldn't move at all when I tried them from the back side of the case. But they're moving a little bit now. The back one's still really stuck. But it does try to turn. I think it's just extremely dry and um, dirty. I wound I wound the time side was loose and I figured I had to get it smaller to get it out of the back of the case. But it was open enough that I could feel inside and there's not a bit of oil or grease or anything on those springs. So I think it just had not been serviced in years and years and years and it's frozen up. So.
I think taking it apart and cleaning it, we will be able to get it working. I haven't cleaned anything yet. I've just oiled all the pivots to see what I could do and worked on these. This one is dropping nicely now. It would strike if it was against the thing. This one's still dropping slowly, but everything is at least trying to work now. Amazing what a little bit of oil will do. Look how much faster it's turning. It would barely turn before. Now the fly is spinning and everything is trying to work. So, I wanted to investigate how these two arms work before I started taking everything apart and where my locking pins are. There's um, the wheel here that this wheel that catches into this little cam to shut the, the strike off has um, little pins on both sides. That's what activates these two levers down here as it strikes one, then the other, one, then the other to strike the time. So, so I can see my cam is, there's only one, I think, only one cam on that wheel. So before I take anything apart, I'm going to make sure what locks my strike so that I don't have to struggle so much putting it back together. Uh, my lift is here. If you can see inside this hole, the uh, Minute Arbor has the hurricane symbol on it too, little cams that lifts right here. Puts it into warning and then when it drops down it's not dropping well but then when it drops down it lets the mechanism go off. So that was the half hour, that was one strike. So it strikes once on the half hour and then the number of hours on the hour. So pretty cool little movement. Um, I've got two warning pins here. I don't know why there are two. But I know when this arm lifts to put it into warning, it lifts this wire right here. Which lifts your hand out, your count lever out. And then um, the whole f flat piece that's moved by the cam is got a little hook on the end of it, catches one warning pin. I just don't know why there's two warning pins on there. Not sure, but let me put the cam back down, let it strike, and see it shut off. So it looks like all of the shutoff is, is in this cam up here. I'm not seeing any pins hitting anything here. That's just when it goes into warning. You can see the shutoff arm a little bit better here. A little L-shaped slips into that cam. This is your time adjustment, little square knob on the front, makes you make small adjustments, it slowly lifts and, and lowers your um, suspension spring. This one is bent, I'm going to have to get it straight again, it should be on top of that screw and straight across. Right now it's like this, there's no way it would run, no matter how I try to put it. It's not going to stay running because it's crooked.
I was able to turn this knob and bring this brass cross piece back up and straighten it. Well, somebody, when they put this back in and they pinched this shut, they had bent it. So with it up there straight, and then I just put a little bit of oil on my verge where the teeth hit the, the um, I can't think, you know what I'm talking about, the escapement wheel where the, the verge hits it. I put a little bit of oil on the, on the striking surface and uh, it's trying to run. Probably hadn't run in the last 40, 50 years as tight as everything was. This especially, like this was amazing that I could not physically move these by hand. They were so frozen in there. They got a big spring on them. I'll show you when I take it all apart. I mean, they really should spring down and strike the gong mechanism and I couldn't move them at all. Important to have your clock serviced every five to 10 years. But this is pretty cool. Time to take it all apart. So for me to be able to lay this down and work on it, this is the back of the movement. So I've got to be able to lay it down to get it apart. I'm going to worry about protecting this. This is my most important part to take off, the most fragile part. So to get this out of this little thing that holds it, there's two pressure squeezed brass teeth on there. You can take a razor blade and separate it slightly. That'll help you get in that little tiny thin point. And usually there's some type of little metal at the top to help hold it on top, but this one actually has a, the wire goes through this brass to secure it on there. So it's not gonna fall out. So anyway, for this movement, you have to open up this little brass wire, this little piece of wire. Take it out. And then your suspension spring will slide out. See, it's got the hole at the top. The ones I've bought before already had the wire pre wound, and you just slid it in, and the wire sat on top of the brass. But it could come forward that way, I guess, if the movement was turned sideways and your brass wasn't tight enough. Alright, so I'm going to be very gentle with this, but I can't take this off yet until I get the power off these springs. So I've got my roll of tape and I've got the um, pendulum leader wire under there in such a way that there's not any pressure on it so when I push down on these I'm not bending anything. So I'm going to take the pressure off these springs. I've done that before on video. Um, there's the spring wire pushing on the click. I'm going to release that and slowly let this down. I did let these springs out. They are so dry that they don't even want to expand all the way. Parts of them did, parts of them didn't. I wound them back up and I'm going to put some oil on them just so that they will release all the way. They're so uh, dry and catching on themselves that there could be some hidden pressure on the spring. When I go to open the movement I don't want that so um, I'm going to put some oil on. You wouldn't normally oil it this heavily. But I'll be washing all this back off when I clean it. See when it winds it should be flat. You see how bumpy this side is? It winds up and it's holding on itself. It shouldn't. It should be getting pressure from the loop end here and the hook on your arbor. Nothing else should be giving it any pressure. It shouldn't be 
binding on itself. So I'm going to put that on there and let it sit for a little bit. I'm going to put my clamps on and take it apart with the clamps on the movement. So four nuts, <clears throat> one is on an adjustable arm. These are all fixed and there were two screws in these, but you can see there's slots, so it's adjustable here, 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 and this last one, and then you put the two fixed screws in. Kind of reminds me of a Hermley movement with that dual system at the bottom. Um, I got my spring clamps on without too much difficulty. They were just a hair too much spring material because it's an eight day spring to fit in this next size down. I had to go with a bigger size and I had to wind them up pretty tight to get past the post that's got the, the um, gong levers on it. And this one mounts to the bottom, but you'll notice this one doesn't mount to the bottom. So this is the usual configuration on an American clock. The, the um, <clears throat> loop-in springs go on these bottom posts. This one's on a side post over here. It's just a short post. It doesn't go to anything else. And you'll notice it's kind of raised up off of it. So I don't think that's the safest design. I don't know if somebody took it apart and put it back together wrong. That would be my guess. This should be a safety post so that if the spring unwinds, it doesn't go into your movement and damage things. Um, there's a short post there for the same thing. Sometimes there's some in the center that you have to make sure you don't have your, your um, clamps on because if you clamp around that, then <laughs> you can't get your movement apart. Um, but when I put this back together, I may put this at the bottom because I don't know why else that rivet would be there. It's a heavy post like this one, but I've never seen one mounted at the bottom and at the side like that. Plus with nothing holding it from coming off except your top of your wheel. The back of this movement doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty brassy. This side looks pretty rusty. Kind of like it's had oil run down through it and maybe it was lacquer plated at some point. I don't know, but it's rough looking on this side. I don't know that I'm going to put it in my solution. I might just clean it by hand. because I don't want to lose that patina. Okay, I'm going to have to take these two screws and these two screws and remove this mechanism. It's not keeping me from lifting the plate off. It's a straight pole there, but it's got to come off anyway. So I've taken my pictures from the front, from the back, from around the sides, a bunch in the top so that I could see how to line things up again, possibly if I had a problem. The pictures really help a lot. They don't help with depth perception. When you're looking at the picture, it's hard to tell which wheel's in front of which because it's a two-dimensional surface and you need that 3D thing. But um, I've drawn out my, my movement. I'll separate the parts for cleaning, strike side, time side. So let's see if we can take this off. Nope, forgot the one in the middle. And I still didn't take those off. I was busy taking pictures. That's a smaller one. Let's see if that'll fit. Hang on.
So you can see what I was talking about there. This is really bent up. It's been forced over that screw that I just removed that's got a pretty tall head on it. So I'm gonna have to straighten this little flange out a little bit on this side. And I put this back together. All right. Let's see if we can lift without everything exploding like my last video. like to try to get a picture of where the different levers are if possible should be able to with this movement mm -hmm. springs are dangerous things these eight day springs are um, pack a punch. I'm going to move this wire that moves this gong. Maybe. Okay, that one's off. Nice little design on this lever, the little bend and the little curly cue. Normally the curly cue has a wire that comes to the bottom of the movement that you can use to lift this and get the hands to match up with whatever it's striking. There was no wire on this one. It may have never come with a wire. Um, what else can I show you? This has shifted somewhere. It's not locked anymore. There's my two gongs. The bottom side of this cam has another pin, just like th these two pins, has two on the other side that do the other gong. And this should be turned with this little locking arm in the cam to stop the strike. like so when we put it back together and then the warning pins are important to notice if this one hasn't moved any it is out here but what's confusing is this wheel the great wheel second wheel third wheel fourth wheel with the warning pins normally there's only one warning pin but there's actually two on this one one directly across from this one on the bottom so we'll need to know which way our wheels turn to know which side of the lever they're going to strike against. And that is all happening on the second one. This one is not doing anything. So some clocks, American clocks, they are there are two arms like this. One is here and one is right about where this is. And that second arm has the, the pins that catch it when it goes into warning and to stop the strike, the two different parts of this wheel. This one doesn't, it's got one wheel here. And then the other wheel, the other lever, sorry, I'm calling them wheels. The other lever is a flat arm that's attached to the bottom. That's interesting. We're going to get down there and check that out. Okay, so this is my time side. The, the lanterns aren't terribly dirty. I think it, if it had just been oiled, it might have kept on running. And 
And this goes through the slot. And is bent also. Uh, I don't know if it started out that way, but it looked like it was designed that way and looking at the case, because if it was straight out, your, your um, pendulum suspension spring and the little wire that comes off of it would be rubbing, so I think it was designed to be bent. So here's the other lever. It's usually kind of like a on an arbor like this with wires. This one is mounted to the case and it's and it's got flat levers. So less bending, less adjusting. This I don't know if you can see that. This is my minute and hour arbor. So when it falls off of these lift arms, the hurricane symbol, it lifts slowly, it turns this way, lifts slowly, and then it should fall down sharply here and make it strike. So it was lifting, but then it would stay up. It wasn't dropping back down, so this is pretty dirty. Um, so only two parts to this arm. <clears throat> Where some American clocks had three parts on this arm, this one does have three. The count wheel lever, the locking arm for the cam, and the lift lever that rides on this. When this is pushed up to put it into warning, the warning lever catches underneath here on the pin. Okay, so the strike side. So there's your three parts to that lever, two parts on this one. This one falls off of your hurricane symbol. This is your um, warning pin catch. The pin catches right in there. So less adjusting with a fixed system like that. Okay, finished taking this off and getting it clean. These hammers <clears throat> just slide on. It's pretty gummy right there. That's part of what was freezing it up. A bunch of junk in the middle you can see. Keeping the gong from moving. And then there's a little cam it looks like fitted on there between the two of them. a lot of oil to get them to move it all. So I release my other spring. This is the one that didn't want to swing. Very gummy. Leather on them is pretty good. I'm not going to have to change that out. And this last lever, there's a rivet, but it looks like it's just pressure fitted onto it. And 
I have to do my gear puller. I'm going to try this. There's a little bit of the <clears throat> pin that goes on sticking up. There's not much. There's This side has a surface for this to rest on, but not really the other side. So if I can get it to move at all. slip it up if I can get it to slide a little bit. Not wanting to move. so tight and not moving. So just pull up. Maybe I'm not far enough down. Okay, may not be coming off. I did finally get it off by going around and twisting the screwdriver slightly. And what it is is the little pressure fitting on the top. This little guy. And I'm glad I got it off because this is never going to fall free like it needs to. It's so gummy underneath. So, gotta get that post good and clean. Um, when I took the springs off, this one was on the strike side on this post. The other one was on the time side on the bottom post. Um, there is a lip on the top of that to hold it. I don't understand why they would put one there and one there. It fits on this one easily. Don't know. Now that I <clears throat> now that I took all the wheels off, I this is how I let my springs down. I put just the springs back in, four screws on, put some gloves on. There's nothing to hold it. You can't just wind it and it stay. There's I mean the clicker all works because the gears are against other gears. So when you've got everything out of there, uh, you can't wind it. So I put on leather glove and wind and tilt. Uh, wind till uh, usually <laughs> this one did it very nicely and of course I didn't have the video running. Um, I wind it until this gets loose and then I can just slip off the ring and then I unwind it and let it spin out. This one has had a little more trouble winding from the get-go. I thought maybe the spring was broken because in the case it was big and it didn't want to wind, but I think it's just my center arbor is not, not holding. Maybe I'm turning it the wrong way. Might have something to do with it. I probably just took the center arbor out of the hole. Okay, let me take this back apart and get the center arbor back attached. All right, let's see if it goes a little better this time. It 
help if you turn it the right way but this one releases very easily and doesn't want to catch back I had to take my needle nose and get the inside of the spring and curl it around a little bit tighter to get it to stay so and also I need to file on this a little bit this really does not like to take a key or let go of a key once it gets one it's not gonna hold it's just slipping off okay so you can see that the center of this it's got a it's got a decent little lip on it right there but it's not enough to catch it and also if you follow it around the second ring see how it's touching the next coil so that tells me it's stretched out some so I'm gonna bend this tighter if it still won't hold I'm gonna bend the second row tighter sometimes it takes the row behind it to hold it on so I'm gonna do that and then uh, get back to getting this thing clean. The rest of the thing looks pretty concentric, but for some reason that looks too bent out. Um, it's trial and error. Hopefully it's not going to break. It looks like there's some pitting and rust and stuff inside the center of that, so hopefully the whole center coil is not going to break off because someone has probably manhandled it before to get it this big stretched out so then it causes tool marks places for rust to set up and I've not seen any with little holes in them like that but good chance it's just gonna break on me well I got lucky it didn't break and I got a good curly cue on there so tight that I couldn't really get my arbor in there so it seems to be holding much tighter now. I guess you could unwind this like a barrel spring with this clamp on here. I don't know. I'm not seeing anybody do that. I'm not going to try it. I'm going to put it back in my in my uh, end of this spring is just about shot. It shouldn't be bending that easily. And it looks kind of unwound again, flat, so we'll see. All right, we'll see if it's going to hold. I um, flipped the spring over and the bottom side of the curly cue wasn't as tight as curled as the top side so um, there was room for the bottom of the arbor to wiggle and come out of the the hook to come out of the hole so we'll see I'm still turning it the wrong way I feel like It holds tightly enough that when I pull on it, it wants to uncurl, but it won't wind the spring. It just pops. So I've put this arbor back on multiple times. I start winding it, and then it goes click and pops off, and you can see it is... It's just expanded. It's it's in popping off. It has enlarged itself and done it enough times that um, the inside of it is just flimsy and probably about to break off. So I don't know how I got it wound to get it out of the clock.
success finally after about an hour and a half of fighting with it I ended up filing this arbor whatever gummy stuff was on it was hanging up my key I would actually have to take the pliers and try to pry it off of there and I think that's part of what messed up this thing because it's, it you could pull this forward enough that this bottom of the arbor would come out of the hole so I think that's what gave it some wear and messed up its bite um, but anyway finally finally got it to hold and start unwinding so if this does not want to come out of this for cleaning I'm not making it come out now that I finally got it to stay in Ugh, this spring definitely needs some cleaning Alright, off we go to the ultrasound. has been warming up for the hour and a half. I've been fighting with this one spring here.